Hey everyone, today I'd like to show you how to connect the Panasonic AG ROP app to the Panasonic DVX200 camera. Uh, a few weeks ago they released firmware version 1.4 that uh, now supports this app, but unfortunately there's not really any good information online that shows you how to do it. So I'm hoping here in a few steps I can show you how to do this and you can be up and running and, and ready to go with this. Let's start by making sure that you have one of the two supported network adapters. You can either use the Panasonic AJ-WM30 or you can use the Asus USB-N53. I'm not sure if it matters, but if I look at the side of the box that mine came in, mine's hardware version A1. Now the next step is we're going to want to download the AG ROP app. Uh, you can either do a Google search for Panasonic AG ROP app, or if you look in the notes to this video, I will put a link down there to the iTunes store uh, for the app. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is in the beginning, I had typed in Panasonic ROP app, and there's actually two apps online. There is the AG ROP app, which is what we need, and there's one called the PG ROP app, which is for a different series of cameras. When you open the interface, they look nearly exactly the same. So I spent a little time trying to get that one to work. Actually, I spent a lot of time trying to get that one to work, and it just wouldn't work for me, and then I realized I had downloaded the wrong app. So this is the one that you want to get, the AGROP. I'm going to click on free, and give this a second to switch out to the iTunes store. Uh, I had the app on this iPad, but I've deleted it just to do all these steps from the beginning so that you can see that this actually works. Um, sorry about the way the screen looks there. I have a uh, OtterBox case on and it doesn't doesn't do too well uh, on video. So here comes the AGROP app from the iTunes store and I have the little cloud symbol here because I had downloaded it before and I'm going to click again and let this download the app. This is an iPad 2, so it's actually not very fast. I've actually installed this on an iPad 2 and an iPad Mini 4, and it's worked fine on both. Um, obviously, this iPad's near the end of its service life, and I'll be surprised if going forward if they offer any new uh, operating systems for it, but we're going to stick it out as long as we can here. So that's downloaded, and... We will, I'm just going to move this out to a fresh screen here so that it's easy. Um, move it one more. Move it out to a fresh screen here. And that's all we're going to do for now. We're not going to open the app or anything. Um, we're going to move over to the camera and get started there. So with the camera turned off, let's uh, insert the USB stick into the USB port. and we will turn the camera on. Okay, so let's go into the network settings of the camera. Let's tap on the screen, we'll hit menu. And if you notice here, there's the uh, symbol for the uh, wireless device uh, for our, our USB uh, stick. Let's go into network setup. And no matter what you've done in here up till now, if this is your first time, or even if you tried it before and it didn't work, let's clear the settings. So let's go into Network Initial Settings. This is not going to clear any of your scene files or anything like that. It's only going to clear the uh, network settings. So Reset Network Settings, yes. <clears throat> and let's start at the top for User Account. We're going to set a user account, and this is going to be the account that the iPad is going to log into. You know, it's kind of just like when you log into your email server and things like that. You have to have a username and password. So click on Unregistered and press Refresh. Now, one thing that I found out, and you guys haven't seen up till now, is even though you saw me download the app and everything like that and put the USB stick and everything like, like that, from this part forward, this is seriously my fifth time trying to do this. Um... And I think I really stumbled across what makes this work or not work. And it has a little bit to do with a video that a guy, I saw online. A guy showed me, or not a guy showed me, but there was a guy, a guy from Italy on YouTube. And 
I couldn't understand what he was saying because I don't speak Italian, but I had a friend of mine that does interpret it. And when he got to one of the network settings, he said, make sure you use 10 characters for your password. And I believe it was the wireless password um, or it won't connect. Well, even though I tried that and I used um, smaller username and passwords, it didn't seem like it worked right and it didn't connect. So um, we're going to use 10 characters for everything. So this user account, let's call this, and we're going to put it in lowercase, let's call it DVX200 user. And press enter. And then we have to enter the password for this account. So let's use in lowercase, let's use A through J. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Press enter. It's going to ask us to confirm that. So remember to press your cap lock button here again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Press enter. So that's our user that we're going to log into. It's kind of like your email address and, and password. But um, let's click return. And this is it's going to wireless setup. Now the wireless setup, you have three options. Direct means that you'll go between the DVX200 and your iPad. Uh, if you do SSID select, that means that your camera is going to talk to your local Wi-Fi network. And that means you'll have to put the iPad on the same local Wi-Fi network. And manual is if maybe you have a hidden SSID um, or whatever, you can manually type all that in. So we're going to go into direct. And the... ID of the camera, being that the camera is going to act like a like a hub or a wireless router, is DVX200. So eventually, you'll see in a minute here, when we scan the network and look for the camera, it's going to be called DVX200. So if you had a production where you had multiple DVX200s, you could change the name of this and call it DVX200-1, DVX200-2, or whatever, whatever you want it to be. So that's the ID. The band, it's going to be on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and it's going to automatically select its channel. Uh, so let's go down. This is the wireless network password for the camera, just like maybe your home or business router, your studio router has a password. Um, we have to enter one in here. I have no idea what the one is on here. Panasonic kind of left us high and dry with any kind of information. So let's just make this one through zero. Again, we're going to stick to our 10 characters. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and press enter. That one it doesn't ask you to confirm. So let's hit exit and we'll see it save. And let's go back in one more time to the settings. Go back to network setup. So we did a user account, we set up the um, connection. Uh, wireless LAN setup. Um, the camera's IP address is 192.168.0.1. Now you're going to need to remember what that is or scroll back in the video here to uh, see that. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 um, and the default gateway it really doesn't matter. Um, DHCP, I've had varying success with turning DHCP on so for now we're going to leave it off. Um, let's hit return. Connection history, this would show you if somebody was connected to your camera. Um, let's hit return. Network initial setting, we already did that one. And then network setup password. What this is, is if you want to, after you get this all set up, put another password in and have it so nobody can get into here to change these settings, you could do that. We're not going to do that. So let's hit exit. And now the camera's uh, completely set up. So I'm going to do this all in one shot and hopefully... This works this time. So let me move the, uh, let's move over to my iPad here. Okay, so here's the AGROP app. Don't click on it yet. We're not ready to do that. I know you want to click on it, but don't do it. Well, you'll get to do it here in a minute. Um, click settings. And let's scroll down in this left column and let's find AGROP. 
So here's AGROP. This has the IP address, that's the IP address of the camera, and then the user account, that's the one that we did, um, DVX200 user, and password was A through J. So let's go into IP address and do 192.168.0.1, which that's the address of the camera. So when the AGROP app connects to um, the network, in fact, let me see if I can make this look a little bit better. Um, when it connects to the network, um, that's that's how it's who it's going to connect to. User account, we did DVX two hundred user, and the password was A through J, A B C D H I J. We're done here. Slider assist. I'm going to leave that off right now. I actually don't even know what that does. So let's go back up, and now it's going to scan the network, and we should see DVX200, which we do right there. So don't click right on DVX200. Click on the information button over here on the right. And let's go to static, and we're going to give the iPad an address that is similar to the camera, but not the same address. So let's do 192.168.0. Dot 10. The camera was 1, this was 10. And then subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.255.0. Oh, and because we're not doing anything out on the web and stuff like that, the router is really not going to matter and the DNS isn't going to matter. So now that we have that in, 192.168.0.10. And subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Uh, Let's click Join Network. Now it's going to ask us for the wireless password of the DVX200. And that's going to be 1 through 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. And then we're going to click Join. And if it connects, we'll see a checkbox right next to DVX200. So that says we're successfully connected to the DVX200. So now we finally get to go to the app. So let's hit our home button. Let's go to the app. When I click on this, you're going to see a little pop-up message that says connecting to camera. Connect to camera, initialize, please wait. So we're successfully connected. You can see we're at um, a 30th of a second, ISO 1000, um, iris is at 5.3. Um, so let me take this off of here. This won't be very graceful, but at least we'll get a, an idea for how it's going to work here. Let me slide this over. And so now on the iPad, I'm going to press record, start, stop. And there's our record indicator. Sorry about that. And I can stop it. Um, you can see the time code. Um, when I restart it on here, you see the time code start to roll. And I'm going to stop it again. And then you can see that the shutter is a 30th of a second. So if I come over to here, and I bump the shutter to 50th, 60th, take the ISO down to 500, I'll click there once, 800, 640, 500. So all of that stuff works. Um, the only thing that I haven't been able to get to work is if I click on the thumbnail button, you'll see when I do that the camera will kind of blank out, it'll, it'll say modes changing. Um, so the camera kind of goes into this blank mode and maybe it's something that I'm doing wrong, but I don't get anything on the iPad. Um, it pretty much just stays blank. I can't play anything. I don't see anything on there. Um, so I'm not quite sure what that's about. And if I look back at the, at the, uh, display and I click, uh, control, then this will come back out of the, uh, the thumbnail mode. Um, and another thing, 
uh, at least this way this was before, if I click on the thumbnail button up here with the iPad connected, it will not bring up the thumbnails. So there's some bugs that are still happening with this. I mean, at best, you know, you can at least um, mess with your focus and your zoom and all that stuff on here. Uh, there's settings for the white balance. Um, drop this down so it's a little more easier to see. So that stuff's on there, but that should at least get you in the ballpark and going. Um, and I know it's pretty difficult, but it seems like if you use the settings that I just showed you, uh, everything should be fine. So that's it for now. Good luck.